All right, guys. So I have a question for you if you guys are comfortable raising your hand to it. Um, how many of you have a friend or family member you that you're aware of who's a part of the LGBTQ community? Good. Um, from here on out, I want, you, I want for you to think about those individuals throughout the speech. Imagine if they're either applying for a job, renting an apartment, or just going to grab a bite to eat at a local restaurant. And how would you feel if these individuals were denied service or approval just because they're gay? So my speech today is gonna to be about the approval or like how the, um, why the non-discrimination ordinance or the NDO should be approved in all the states of, in, in the US. Um, my proposal is by passing the non-discrimination laws in all of the levels of government will allow for LGBTQ persons to be protected against exclusion of employment, public accommodations, and housing. First, I'll explain what the non-discrimination ordinance law is with a few statistics on those. Then I'll explain how the what the um like the causes and effects of the lgbt discrimination is and like with the, including a few terms and then i will be addressing like a few solutions and explanations on how the the law or like the government should be protecting the lgbt community um so first, the, the definition, according to mlive.com, uh, from an article, it says that the ordinance prohibits discrimination based on sexual orientation and gender identity and employment, housing, and public accommodation. The ordinance prohibits discrimination based on other factors already included on the city and state legislation, including race, color, religion, national origin, sex, age, height, weight, marital status, physical or mental disability, and family status. So according to the Center for American Progress, it says that more than 40% of lesbian, gay, and bisexual workers report experiencing employment discrimination at some point in their lives, and 90% of transgender workers report experience in harassment, mistreatment, and uh, mistreatment or discrimination at work or have tried to hide who they are to avoid these experiences. And unfortunately, anti-LGBTQ discrimination continues after the workday ends with LGBTQ people and families reporting discrimination in the housing market, schools, the cr criminal justice system, and public spaces, including restaurants, retail stores, service centers, and healthcare offices. Um, and that, uh, that article was uh, from the Center for American Progress. Um, another article stated from the freedomforallamericans.org states that nearly all studies that examine LGBT discrimination find that bias and profiling make people of color, transgender people, youth and older adults more vulnerable to discrimination. Um, and across the country, coast to coast, Americans also support the comprehension, comprehension federal protections across the country. So in addition, a a recent survey from Heart Research found nearly 70% of millennials, millennial adults support comprehension in federal discrimination legislation for gay and transgender Americans. From the 80% in the Northeast to 60% in the Midwest, 57% in the South to 66% in the West. Now on my second point, I would like to, to explain the causes and effects and including the, the terms of a few LGBT discrimination. Uh, so, for
For example, in my hometown of Jackson, where commonly known as the home of, Repu of the Republican Party, has been fighting for the non-discrimination ordinance for at least two decades, which is over the majority of our age in this room. Um, so in Michigan, only 37 cities have an ordinance prohibiting discrimination based on sexual orientation, and only 40 of them are prohibiting discrimination based on gender identity and private employment, housing, and public accommodations. Um, internal and external effects can occur to a LGBT individual due to these biases against them, such as like different things of self-doubt and like worth, their parents like kicking them out just because of their sexual orientation, um, homeless families just because of their parents and like their sexual orientation and them not being able to provide to their families because of them not getting a job or being approved of housing. Um, employees uh, can also fear losing jobs by being open about their sexuality. The impact on their job performance can also be an impact too. Um, psychological challenges, business, the business market sales might de decrease and like the increase in mental illnesses and devi deviant behavior might occur as well. Um, so the terms like intersectional, intersectionality, uh, microaggressions, heterocentrism, heterosexism, and hormone, hormone, Homo negativity are all ways to describe how the sexual gender minorities or the SGM are discriminated against. So according to an article called Sexual Orientation and Gender Diversity in the Workplace, it said that microaggressions are considered brief and commonplace uh, daily verbal behavior or environmental communicate. Uh, communications, hostile, derogatory or negative slights and insults, particularly toward those of historically oppressed groups. There are also three different types of microaggressions. Uh, micro, in, uh, so for instance, micro invalidations, micro insults, and micro assaults. Micro Micro-invalidations are things uh, to describe um, I'm gonna skip that, so you know those words. <laughs> um, glow implications are Sexual and gender minorities are uh, subjected to discrimination, harassment, and murder around the world. These in incidences of violence perpetuate stigma, fear, and invalidation of SGM or the sexual and gender minorities individuals. So according to Carol and one of uh, the same article that I stated about the uh, the gender diversity in the workplace. Um, she said that the studies around the world have shown that when compared with non-LGBT people, LGBT people earn less, have fewer job opportunities, live in poverty, experience poor health outcomes, face obstacles to education, experience violence and family rejection. But globally, sexual and gender Minorities are typically the primary targets when traditional values are solicited. In fact, SGM people are often described as being deviant, deplorable, sick, or abnormal. Um, and finally, I'll talk about the solutions and explanations of the protections of the LGBT community. Um, Um, 
so I will just say that. Um, well, basically, they they should just be on the stage, just not be so judgmental of the LGBT community, or like anybody should, just because of who they are. Um, they should have the same rights and abilities to get a job or go anywhere as much as anyone else that is like straight. But my, but in conclusion, my my relevance to the uh, to the speech is the issue is extremely important to me because being uh, within the same commun community myself, my life is jeopardized and just thinking about how I can have access to any of those previous things because I'm not having access to any of those previous things because of my sexual orientation and or identity is unbelievably disappointing. So whenever you get a chance to change current and future lives in the LGBT community, especially on November 6th, consider how this can also affect your fellow loved ones because there is, they're as much of a human as you are and deserves the same rights. Thank okay. you. Okay, good job.